show brought to you by WP Relax. No matter whether you have an existing site, want to transfer your site, or need to start a WordPress site from scratch, we have a plan to suit your needs. So say bye-bye to WordPress problems and relax with WP Relax. Hi everyone, this is Ahmed Karimni and welcome to Be Efficient TV. The mission of this web TV show is to boost the efficiency of your business alive through tips and tricks from leading experts. And today I have with me a very special guest, Greg Gauthier. He is the world, the current world number three and uh, world number one so many times. Welcome to the show, Greg. Thanks a lot. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> it's really a pleasure. I'm so thrilled and excited about this interview. Uh, how old were, were you when you first started uh, playing squash? Well, I started uh, when I was four years old and uh, my mother was uh, the manager of a squash club. So I really started really early and uh, yeah, I just fell in love with the game because every day after school I was going to the club and I was on the court uh, <laughs> every evening. So yeah, it was like, uh, yeah, it became like quickly my passion, you know. Uh, is it is your mom still running the, the club or like you no, running several... Mom, yeah. No, she was working for six, seven years, and after she decided to sell the club at the right time, and uh, and afterwards uh, she was working uh, uh, in another company uh, which was selling like heating system, which is totally different things. So, but uh, once the club was sold, uh, I moved to the south of France because I'm originally from the north, northeast, and I moved to the south of France as the federation. Uh, created the sports institute where all the elite players uh, can train together with the national coach so i left home uh, when i was like 13 years old uh, and uh, to decide to do my career uh, you know really early so that was a quick uh, quick uh, decision for me but uh, i knew what i wanted and my family uh, let me do my choice uh, as long as i could uh, do well you know they 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 were uh, they, they didn't really force me. Uh, it was uh, all about my choice. So yeah, I was really lucky at, about at it. At what and, uh, age you moved to the south to start, you know, training with a national team or in uh, the base? Thirteen years old. Thirteen years old. When you realize yeah. that you can be a potential like top fifty or top hundred squash player? Well, when I was like eight, nine years old, I started to do the juniors competitions and I started to be national champion. And uh, I was already beating like uh, the national ch champions in the uh, higher categories. So I knew, you know, I had a certain potential. And then I started to do international competitions uh, quite early. And <clears throat> I knew, you know, I had the, the capacity to do something and I had people behind me who, who was uh, telling me that, you know, I could be a future champion. And then I started to believe in myself. and. Uh, keep on playing tournaments and started to win more and more and then uh, I decided to do it as uh, as a job you know <laughs> how different is the squash now if you compare it before like one decade or two in terms of mindset in terms of fitness is it more tough game the competition is tougher is it how different you see it well it's it's tough to say because uh, Years ago, we didn't use the same kind of rackets. Uh, the courts were different, you know. So uh, now you can see that it goes uh, much faster. You know, we have <coughs> better technology and we have better knowledges also about uh, uh, the training. Uh, it's much smarter now the way we train. We have more machines uh, to use, and uh, and all the coaches have more knowledges, you know, and more experiences with. Uh, with uh, over the years so i guess uh, uh, the new generation of players of course you know play with a higher intensity and uh, the game is totally different you know but uh, and you have new players coming in and, and bringing a new game and uh, I, I guess it's like less the the sport is less uh, the game is less passive that it used to be like maybe 20 or 30 years ago but as i say you know we uh, we use different technologies now, so it's... Uh, so you see uh, it as a more of, fitness... That's one of the reasons. You, you see it as a more fitness uh, sport or more about, you know, more nicks, killing the balls? I'm a, I, I, I guess it's an overall thing and uh, probably more skills, you know, players bring the new thing into the game and uh, also the score, uh, the scoring system has changed. 
so it's a different game than before you know so uh, uh, maybe uh, it's not as long as it used to be the matches as uh, before it was in uh, two nine scoring and uh, and uh, you know you need 15. to have uh, the serve you know to to score a point and it's totally different now it's to 11 with every point which and every point counts so i guess it's more uh, attacking game now and uh, and uh, more intense you know so it's you, it's tough to compare because the, as I said, technology has changed and scoring system has changed. And so, but this, but that uh, means the, sh the the game became shorter. But it's still, in terms of time, it's breaking s lots of records comparing with the past. That tells you that yeah, the quality of have, players. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Sometimes you know you have matches which can last like two and a half hours and. Yes. What's your longest uh, match ever? It depends on the it, it depends on, on the style of play of people. You know, uh, that's uh, one of the thing. You know, if you have two guys who are like uh, uh, playing passive, you know, and uh, there's not much uh, happening in the game, it can last forever. You know, so. What's your longest <laughs> uh, match ever? I think it's about uh, between one fifty to two hours. Wow. Yeah. You remember yeah. with whom you played? Yeah, I remember last year I played the match close to two hours uh, or two years ago with Nick Matthew. It was in the World Team's uh, semi-finals of France against England. And uh, I uh, I lost that match 12-10 uh, uh, in the fifth or 11-9 or in the fifth. I was ahead in the score, but I had uh, huge cramps in the fifth games and that I could uh, barely stand up. And uh, yeah, that was a tough game. Uh, it's tough to recover, especially after the match, and to be able to play the next day. <laughs> but you have to deal with the conditions, and you have to be able to stand up again the next day and be on court and play. <laughs> so you like if we compare, let's say, the top ten players now. If they play with the top ten players ten years ago, you think easily they can beat them, or it's difficult to tell. Uh. Well, the thing is, 10, 20 years ago, we used to have players like Janshir and Jean Girkan, you know, and uh, Peter these Nicole. guys, uh, they, were, they were really dominating the game. And then, so, it would be interesting to n see what would happen with the top players now against those, those kind of guys, you know. It's tough, to, it's tough to call, you know, and to say, you know, who would win, but it uh, would be interesting to see. You know? <laughs> Who's the toughest uh, opponent for you? Like who you feel uh, that is very uh, uh, difficult well, uh, to play in with? In terms of records, the toughest guy has been uh, Rami Ashour uh, so far. Uh, well, he's uh, he's kind of unique game and uh, tough to beat. You know, it's tough to see what he's gonna do and he's uh, he's uh, he's volleying a lot. He has a lot of shots, you know, and is uh, really tricky and. Uh, Physically, you know, is 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 there as well. So it's tough to find the the, the that little the thing tactic, you know, to yeah. to break him down. Uh, really not easy. But uh, unfortunately, he's been having a lot of injuries the past few years, which make him play only like few tournaments a year compared to what we do. Uh, but he's uh, he's quite unique, you know. So. There's it's, guys like I would have liked to play, for example, I would have really liked to play guys like Jan Chir, you know. It would have it, been uh, nice, you know, to be on court and see what it's like too, you know. And in, in squash, <laughs> sometimes we have some players, even if they beat us, but still you enjoy playing them more than other players. Yeah, so yeah. Who, who you enjoy yeah. the most when you play with, regardless yeah, think, of the result? Uh, I think playing a guy like uh, with Rami is... Uh, Really, is all, always an interesting match. You know, it's uh, uh, going super fast, and uh, and uh, of course, you know, you know, before going on the court, it's gonna hurt. You know, and you you're gonna be in the red zone from the first point to uh, to the last point, and uh, you know, I work all my life, you know, to uh, to uh, to be on court uh, uh, with this kind of players and to be to try to play and beat these kind of players. So. Uh, uh, I really enjoy playing uh, playing him, you know, and also he's a, he's a person who is really fair on court. You know that there's not going to be uh, something that he's not going to steal any points or whatever. Uh, so uh, it's only, you know, the pure game, you know, which is, uh, this is what I like, you know. How fair do you think you are in the court? 
yourself. Yeah, me. I, you know, I don't. Uh, I hate uh, like. Uh, I like justice. You know, I, I hate injustice. So uh, when someone, you know, take uh, like points uh, when it's double bonds or in the team, you know, uh, of course uh, I hate that. I hate that. You know. Uh, but sometimes, of course, you know, the, the game goes so quick that you can't really see what's happening. So you can't always judge right. Uh, but there's referees, you know, for, for this, you know. And of review. Course. Yeah, yeah the review, review system really Well, helps. the review actually, you know, doesn't uh, count, you know, the double bounce or the teams, you know. But it's good to have it in the system now, uh, this kind of review thing, you know. It's, uh, it's a great, uh, great invention and it's good for the sport to bring new things as well. So yeah, <laughs> when you enter and play, you know you have a tough match with Rami Ashur or with Nick Matthew or the others. Usually, tactically, how you start the match? Like you play only straight to see how the yeah. game will go, or how you usually start? So before that match, you know you uh, set up a tactic, you know, and uh, depending on uh, how you feel, of course, you know if you feel good or if you're tired, if you have little injuries or if you. Uh, feel like you can go for it so <clears throat> uh, but at the beginning of the match I try to focus on you know my accuracy you know and try to straight away dominate you know the court uh, of course both both players are fresh so they can you know play fast but you have to uh, uh, to know that the game can be long and not to rush things you know not to go too fast you know you need I'm trying to feel you know the ball find my marks on the court and try to find my length first and find accu uh, accuracy, you know. Once and accuracy I, gives you confidence. I, I have this, then, then it gives me, once I, I find good length and good accuracy, then I, I jump on the tee and I start, you know, to uh, try to move my opponent around the court, you know. Like accuracy, you feel it builds your uh, confidence so you can carry on the plan or the, the yeah. strategy that accuracy you put Accuracy is the key, you know. Accuracy is the key because if you play really close to the wall, to the side walls, then you know that you give no opening to your opponent. So uh, your opponent doesn't have many choice of shots. And uh, yeah, that's how you so, try to... So, so the key for accuracy or to build the momentum in the beginning of the match is to play next to the wall. So straight shots until you feel that you are comfortable yeah, with like, your shots. Like you need to think of pulling your opponent far away from the tee. From the T area, so of course at the beginning, you know, I'm going to try to construct my game with good length and a good pressure, you know. So uh, I put a good pressure on the ball, uh, try to build a good length and try to have a good feel with the ball, and then once I feel it, then I can go for my shots and try to move the opponent around. But I'm not going to do the opposite, you know, because otherwise I might uh, lose it and play too short and then give too much opening to my. Uh, to my opponent and then he's going to start making me run so it's a, it's you, a you tactic that you have to keep to keep it and try to focus on from uh, from the first point <laughs> like, like egyptians are known with their attacking technique usually you play uh, if they take like volley nick all the time so uh, you play you try to lower your straight at the beginning or you still keep next to the wall high straight you, you need to uh, you need to variate the heights you know you need to uh, not to play at the same tempo, at the same, uh, like uh, to hit the ball with uh, vari variation, you know, because if you hit the ball at the same pace every time, your opponent we'll knows, it out. will know how to control the ball, you know. So you need to give uh, and bring a variety to the game that your opponent doesn't know and uh, what you're going to do and, uh, and will always have a different pace when the ball comes into his racket. What's your current uh, training uh, routine, like off the season and on the season? So off season, so it's going to be uh, July and August, where uh, all the players, they have two month break. There's no tournaments, big tournaments. I mean, there's small tournaments, but we don't, the top players don't play these tournaments. So usually the first three, four weeks, I build up my endurance with a uh, lot of bike, you know, and a uh, lot of weights. Uh, and the last three weeks before going into competition, I do all my work on the court, which is going to be endurance work, uh, explosivity work, uh, footwork, uh, and then the technique, you know. So, uh, and once you get really close to the tournament, then you start playing more and more, and a few matches, you know, to, to get the feel of the match, 
again, you know, before starting your first event. And then in between uh, competition during the season, uh, during, between uh, September to uh, to May, we play so much and we travel so much that the, the key really is the recovery in between tournaments. So uh, try to see as much as possible your physio. Uh, you have to be disciplined with your uh, diet, with your uh, stretch. Uh, I do yoga as well. Uh, you have to uh, take some uh, food supplements as well. Uh, you need to uh, really respect those things if you want to really last long. And in between tournaments, if you have a week or two, then you you uh, this is not where you're gonna build your uh, like uh, fitness. But you need to uh, inject a little bit of training that uh, you know Accuracy. you get. Yeah, that you get. Uh, you stay in shape for the future events. You know? So you don't do between the tournaments so much fitness, but you focus on your accuracy. You focus on your yeah. I focus uh, more on my uh, yeah my accuracy, and uh, I do a bit of drills. But uh, this is not where I'm gonna like kill myself, you know. Uh, all the build up is over the summer, and then in between the tournaments, as your match fit, as we say, because you play so many matches, so you still have your base of endurance and everything. In between tournaments, you're gonna inject a little bit of fitness, but just to make your body to remember, you know, how to work and what you have to do, and to keep it in shape, you know. So you're not gonna do a long, long, long fitness, but more like short and intense, you know. So if you compare but it, to, there's uh, a get question. Into the tournaments, get tired. There is a question from a coach from Iraq. Uh, he's currently in Egypt, uh, Imad Ahmed, asking how many hours is the training off season and on season? Like uh, how you divide your week and how many hours you so do? So usually, uh, well, every day, you know, I would work maybe, uh, you know, it depends because it's not always on court, you know, because I I wake up in the morning, at first I do my breakfast, but then I have like a 20 minutes uh, stretch that I do uh, with what, my what uh, time? foam roller to start, you know, and then I go to my training. By the time I warm up, I always warm up minimum 20 to 25 minutes before each training. Then I include, then there's my training, uh, which can be a fitness. Fitness can be an hour and a half to two hours. It depends what kind of fitness you do. If you do weights, if you do a bike session, if you do a mix or if you do like ghosting, it depends what you do. Uh, so every morning can be like two hours. And then in the afternoon, I redo my stretch before going to my training, then I again my warm up. I do briefing exercise three times a week, which takes like 20 minutes uh, to do it. Uh, sometimes I do uh, some hot yoga as well. It's a 90 minute session, but I do it. But uh, if I do this, I replace it as a session. I'm not training squash because otherwise it takes too much energy. Uh, <clears throat> and if you do way too much, then you break, you know. So. It's tough to calculate how many hours I do exactly because your mind works 24 hours. <laughs> you know, but you don't you have sleep. like a weekly routine, let's say morning, evening, Saturday you do this, Sunday yeah, you do like that. Yeah, I, I try, so I, I train twice a day, okay? So, uh, times, can, what, what are the probably times? Probably three fitness a week, three fitness a week, okay? Let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, uh, Thursday, Saturday. It can be two to three fitness a week, and it's two times a day training. And uh, I would train maybe five to five and a half day a week. Uh, so you take one to one and a half day off. Uh, how about the I take one and a half day mm. to two days a week off. Uh, how many, uh, like what are the timings of your training in the morning and in, in the evening? So usually I train either at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock, so for two hours. And in the afternoon I train either at 3 or 4 o'clock, another two hours. Yeah. Okay, so total... I, I, or... I, need, I need to take a rest in between, you know, by the time you get your food, your digestion, you know, your, uh, so I need like three, uh, four hours at least... Uh, in between the training, the two training, you know, to recover and to be able to train correctly in the so afternoon session. You train five and a half days a week. How many of those days are with a coach and how many only by yourself? Well, I mostly have my coach every day. So I have a fitness coach. 
So my fitness coach, uh, it depends if I'm in France or if I'm outside France. If I'm in France, my coach will be here every day. So either he's on court with me or outside the court. I train with other players, you know, and he's, uh, he's telling what drills we're going to do, we were going to work on. And then my fitness coach works uh, privately with me. Uh, but uh, when I'm outside the country, then uh, I have my own program and I do it by myself. And then I find the uh, practice partners, you know, that I can do my drills and, uh, you know, I try to work on certain things that I need to work on, you know. Uh, depending on how I played in the previous tournaments, what I need to do better for the future tournaments. So it all depends on uh, where I am, you know. If I'm in France, I've got all my team. If I'm away, then uh, I'm going to be on my own and I have to find people, you know. At the end of the day, I have always my program from my French coaches, you know. They send me on internet, you know, all my program, you know. So I know what to do every single day. Um, like, how about the food? What What do you food. eat usually when you are in, the, in your training days and when you are on a tournament? What's the difference so, between before the match you eat? How many hours? So me usually I eat like five hours uh, before a match, and uh, then uh, three hours before I will take a protein shake, you know, and uh, then maybe I would eat a banana like an hour before, and then during my match. I will uh, uh, take some uh, gels, you know, sugar gels, you know, and uh, and you need to drink a lot, you know, because you lose a lot of water. And uh, so I've got a recovery drink after my match. I've got drinks during my match as well, you know, certain drinks because you lose a lot of uh, mineral cells as well. So you need to, you know, re-inject, you know, in your body, uh, not to... Uh, be dehydrated and uh, you know so it's it's really important have you tested the food, your uh, weight I before eat, uh, Go ahead. yeah the food i usually eat uh, carbohydrate you know uh, you need to eat like uh, white meat you know uh, or fish uh, vegetables as well some fruits so i, I mostly eat this uh, every single day you know <laughs> so it's like i try to avoid like a breast avoid, uh, chicken uh, with some vegetables. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Grilled. And carbohydrates, the pasta or rice. But I try to avoid, you know, uh, all the sauce, you know, because it can be heavy, you know. Uh, uh, I I try to avoid all the soda, because sodas there's so much sugar. So uh, I, I, you'd rather drink, you know, water or sparkling water, you know, instead. Uh, so all these kind of things, you know, because otherwise, you know, you you can quickly put on weight, and this extra kilo or two that you have, uh, you know, in the tank, make you slower, or make you like, uh, yeah, does it make you not recover uh, as well as, as you should recover, you know? How about diet? All these order? simple things, all these simple things, and all these small details can make the difference, you know, at the top. How about diet so, uh, soda? Do you drink like diet Pepsi or diet Coke? I, 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 I drink once in a while, you know, like of course a soda, I have biscuits once in a while or or ice cream. Of course, because you need to, you can't be like 100, 100% like... Um, a machine uh, when you uh, eat, yeah. Yeah, a machine, but you need pleasure in your, your life as well. Because if you're too... Uh, for uh, the mental, severe, yeah, for the you, mental. You're too severe with yourself uh, then you're gonna break down you know here sure. so you need to bring some pleasure as well but uh, you can abuse with it you know? how long usually is your warm-up before the match so usually I start like 30 minutes before so I I go alone somewhere you know on a squash court so I find an area before and uh, where I can be alone you know away from people and players and uh, I start like 30 minutes before where I do like uh, stretch, activate stretch. So it's like stretch, which is more, you know, like uh, uh, it doesn't make you asleep, you know. Uh, I do uh, some uh, visualization exercise. Uh, I do uh, like running, you know, uh, for my cardio. I do a lot of lunges, you know. Uh, maybe if I can hit few balls, you know, I, I will I will do it. I do skipping, you know, uh, all these kind of uh, things, you know, to uh, to be ready, you know, from the 
the first point, you know. <laughs> Another question about the training from uh, Imad Ahmed about the biorhythm daily. Do you track your biorhythm? Like, uh, Not really. I, as I, yeah, you or you say, leave it for I, the I coach? The yeah, I go with the flow, you know. I, I just feel it, you know. Uh, uh, the way I feel it, yeah. I don't really calculate like crazy things, you know. <laughs> Uh, uh, do you know like the sources of power another question from him in your body and uh, how to reach to the maximum level uh, or also it's handled by your coach or you just go by the flow no like for this uh, you know with all my, with my coaches we have the archives you know for example of all my training the past eight years with all my competitions you know we know everything so we know for example what season I, uh, in what kind of season of the year I usually play well. You know, there's season, you know, you feel good. There's season, you, you know, your body doesn't react as well as normal. So we have all this in archives, you know. And then we know what kind of training has been really working on me and uh, what then you didn't adjust, really work. Yeah. yeah. So with all these kind of elements that we have through the years, we know now, you know, what I should do with my age, with my... Uh, the the way uh, I am now, you know, what to really work on and what we need to bring for me, you know, at uh, this kind of period of the year uh, to make me feel good most of the time because you can't be 100% every day. This doesn't exist, you know. So, but you need to be close to your best to every tournament, you know, or at least try to win Man, you hundred percent, you know, which is most of the case. <laughs> and this is varies between a player and another. That's why on a very at your level, the coach needs to be very tactically, you know, no, knowing what to do, and uh, the fitness yeah. coach needs to custom made the you know the the, the routine for yeah. you, the training routine only for you. Yeah, because you know every player is different. Like uh, I'm a different size than another guy. I have a different uh, weakness and different uh, uh, strong points than other people. So you don't have a coach who makes a copy for 10 guys, you know. You need to adapt to every single person, you know. So that's what my coaches do for me, you know. When I ask you about the players, uh, how do you compare Am Shabana versus Rami Ashur versus Chorbagi versus Karim Darwish at all? They're like, you know, peak time. Well, uh, there uh, it's four top players, unbelievable players, really skillful, all of them, but four different characters and uh, four different, uh, like, game as well. You see Shorbagi, a really powerful player, you know. Uh, he Rami hit hard. Is, uh, r yeah, Rami, and he uses a lot of his power. Rami is uh, very tricky and uh, very, uh, like, uh, uh, he, uh, he used a lot of variation in his game, so you never know what he's doing. Shabana is like uh, like the the best as uh, at doing like really simple things, you know. So uh, like uh, and is uh, is really smooth on the court. And Darwish was like uh, really strong. Uh, uh, for example, his strong part was the forehand, you know, and uh, the forehand front corners. And uh, yeah, it's. All different uh, uh, kind of players, and uh, it's not a copy at all, you know, and uh, uh, which uh, is good to see, you know. How do you compare Nick Matthew versus Peter Nicol versus versus James Wallstrop? Well, it's well, it's same, yes and no, because James is quite unique style, you know, but uh, I would maybe uh, say that Nick. Uh, got a lot of uh, influence maybe from Peter Nicol, you know. Uh, same kind of game, but because uh, you know they can, is the kind of player they can last quite long, and mentally really strong. And James is more like skillful, you know, uses his hand a bit a bit better. And uh, but Nick, uh, uh, Nick is more endurance player, you know, and uh, uses more powerful as well, you know. So it's uh, James is uh, I say James would be more different than uh, Nick and uh, Peter Nicol, you know. 
how do you reset your mindset when you are like 2-0 down to come back to the game? Well, what you need to try to do is, you know, first of all to uh, relax. So relaxation is coming by breathing, you know. You breathe, you know, try to bring, you know, hair, you know, to get, uh, uh, to ch take out all your lactic, uh, lactic acid, you know, in your muscle and uh, also in your brain, you know. First thing uh, I try to do, then take my time, you know, and not rush, you know, and look everywhere to find a solution, you know, and uh, try to think of a new game, you know. Start with, uh, try to start the third game uh, positively, you know, think of uh, of uh, your uh, your tactic, you know, like uh, maybe a new tactic because and not uh, keep doing the same thing if it wasn't working. Uh, you need to have a plan A, a plan B, plan C in case it doesn't work depending on what your opponent brings to you, you know, because on that day maybe this player is a totally different player, you know, so you have to be able to change and readapt, you know, uh, to what he brings to you. And uh, yeah, maybe when you're too low down, you're like, okay, maybe I have nothing to lose anymore now, I just let my arm go, you know. Also. So, so when you have That's a match to plan your tactic, you plan a tactic for the first game, second game, third game, and you plan a tactic plan, if you're 2-1, 2-0. I, I, plan, I plan before I go on court, and then I need to. you need to quickly be able to change your plans if, it, if the plan goes wrong, you know. Okay. Um, another question from Stefan. He's asking, "What's your main? What do you think your main strength and weaknesses?" I think my ma main strength is uh, uh, my speed. You know, speed uh, to move uh, onto the ball, and uh, weakness uh, maybe has been the, my uh, my focus. You know, but uh, I've been working a lot on being able to. Uh, stay calm and focus you know and uh, when i'm able to uh, manage this uh, as well as possible this is where i can win you know like we've seen over the years like your mental before they were you were so much criticized in terms of you know you cannot control your uh, men mentally the inside the game yourself but now you're getting calmer but still sometimes you get into argument with the with the ref or like you you show what's inside you, like, you know, to the audience or to... So how do you are dealing with this over time? Yeah, as I say, you know, now I'm trying to not look at what's outside the court and uh, may take my time in between the points, you know, as I say, when things go wrong, you know. Uh, brief, you know, as well as possible. And that's all I try to focus on, you know, and then Maybe tactically, you know, just go back to basic and play simple squash, you know, instead of rushing things. The more you go back into a rally quick, you know, and things go wrong, the more you're going to rush things and do things wrong. So uh, try to be calm, take take your time first be, before going to the next point and try to focus on doing simple things to build up the rally correctly before doing uh, like stupid things, you know. What do you do after the match, after a tough match, like a semi-final or quarter-final, uh, like you do, you stretch and then you do massage yeah. or like ice bath, uh, shower or what, what do you do? Yeah, first thing I do when I walk off court, you know, is I have uh, two kind of drinks, like uh, two times 50 centiliters to drink within the 30, within 30 minutes. Uh, then uh, I won't do my stretch straight away. My stretch I will do later when I'm in the room, you know, uh, when my body is cold. If I can do ice bath, I will do it. If there's a possibility to do it, I'll do it 10 minutes. Uh, then I will uh, eat, you know, proper food, you know, uh, not too late uh, to be able to go to bed, you know, early and, uh, and be ready for the next day. So... Uh, but I won't do too much, you know, to be honest. Uh, so, uh, and you you have to try to calm down as well because sometimes you are overexcited with the tension of the match, and uh, you need to try to relax as much as possible, you know. 
uh, like in the next day in the morning do you do some shots in the court or you don't play yeah. at all just yeah yeah uh, yeah it depends what time I play if I play really early if I play like 12 o'clock or one o'clock then maybe I won't have time to go to the practice so I will go to the gym and do a little bike for 15 20 minutes a bit of stretch just to activate and have a little sweat after the night you know or if I play later during the day then I go to the court and uh, just have a really light practice just to feel the ball and feel the court you know for 20 minutes and do some stretch can you give us the details of the shakes that you drink before and after the match the so again sorry the the the, the, the co like the details uh, or the contents of of your uh, shakes yeah my shakes you know it can be it's a protein you know uh, it's uh, it's one of my sponsor called uh, Incosport. So, if people are interested to have a look, you know, it's a brand which is uh, international. It's Incosport. So, it's I N K O Sport S P O R. So, uh, uh, yeah, you can. Uh, it's a German brand, and uh, you know, they have like uh, tons of product, and it's uh, yeah, it's important, you know, to uh, to to have this kind of supplement because uh, we, as I say, we train a lot and. Uh, and uh, we sweat a lot, uh, we lose weight so <clears throat> with the training, so you need to refill your body, you know, uh, with the right ingredients, you know, to uh, to be able to recover well, you know, and to be able to perform well. A question from my friend, uh, Stefan from France. Uh, he's asking you are French and why you don't play with Technofiber? Well, because uh, uh, Thierry was using Technofiber and what happened is when I was uh, 17 years old, I had my first contract with uh, with Denlop, and at that time, Technifiber wasn't a big brand, you know, or famous, you know, yet. And uh, I kept on being with Denlop all my life. I remember one year, uh, Technifiber was interested uh, with me when I was younger, like uh, around maybe 24, 23, 24. But they came to talk to me. I just resigned my contract with Denlop for another three, four years. So then, you know, I uh, started to. I kept Denlop. You know, I was faithful to them, and uh, it was a great. Uh, it, they've been really good with me. You know, giving me good product, and uh, uh, so s I'm still with them now. And uh, when when and your contract guess, will be over, and are you interested to move to another company, or you don't know? Uh, I think the Denlop anyway will try to keep me until the end of my career. So uh, yes, <laughs> you know I'm really happy with the product, and uh, it's tough to change. You know when you're used to a racket for so many years, and so uh, of course I would have been interested to play for with a French brand, but uh, I didn't really have the opportunity. I mean, uh, when they were interested, I just resigned my contract, and then you know it was kind of locked. So and then Thierry was using the brand and then then uh, after a while you know uh, when uh, now I'm um, you know it's almost uh, not the, it's not the end of my career but I've got like three four years left and uh, I think a brand like Technifiber wants to invest more in juniors or you know players like this so they took Shorbagi which was a good investment and then the, instead of, of having like uh, ten players in the top twenty you know they they did a good choice of having one good guy and then a few, you know, uh, to represent the brand and maybe, uh, you know, base their uh, uh, con uh, focus on the juniors maybe. So, yeah, they, they've been smart. and uh, But they're a really good company. You know, I know the I know the manager and uh, uh, Guillaume, who is a really good guy. And, uh, yeah, so, and I get on well with them, so... Uh, your top three favorite uh, coaches over the years? Well, to be fair, top three, I don't, uh, I can't say top three, but uh, I had like, uh, I didn't have many coaches uh, uh, in my life. Uh, I had uh, Andre Delos, you know, who's been the national coach. He was my first coach and then was the national coach. Uh, then I had uh, Frédéric Lecomte who is the national coach of the juniors uh, now and it's been since I moved, uh, he was my coach when I moved here in uh, south of France. Uh, 
uh, when I moved and I was 13 years old and he's still the junior coach. Uh, then I have my fitness coach, who, uh, uh, Thomas Adrien, who's been my uh, coach for uh, eight, nine years now. I've got uh, another person who works on my mental uh, 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 side and uh, who's an uh, osteopath, you know, like my main physio, so Mathieu Benoit, who's been working with me uh, since uh, it's been nine years now. And I've got now Renaud Lavigne on my side, who is the national coach. It's been uh, two years. So it's the five uh, five person I had in my life uh, uh, who's been working with me. I have also one more person uh, called uh, Caroline Glenn. Uh, she lives in Manchester and sometimes she's in Paris. She's a fascia therapist. So uh, all these people are the people who's been working uh, with me all my life. So it's not I, it's not like I change the coaches every year, you know. <laughs> What's the influence of Renan and Lavi on on the the sport, squ- the squash sport in in France in general and the national team? And, and and you know, like after you, like the movement of squash is is getting better in in, in France. So what what was his influence on that? Yeah, well, Renan has been a player, you know, and he's been world. He was his best was 17 in the world. He's been playing for the national team for so many years. Uh, uh, he, he was my training partner as well with Thierry Lenku for so many years, and uh, yeah, now it's uh, it's a new thing, you know, for him. You know, it's uh, uh, he still uh, gain experience, you know, because he's been a coach only for two years now. But uh, it brings some uh, freshness as well, you know, uh, into the into uh, our uh, federation and uh, for the national team as well. So it's uh, he brings his experience, you know, as he's been traveling all, all these years and he's been playing. So he knows, you know, the he knows the professional uh, side of being a player, you know. So now he. Uh, uh, is on the other side and tries to bring this to the players, you know, to bring, you know, uh, his analysis and his knowledges about uh, the sport. So, uh, which 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 is good, of course. Yeah. Uh, how was your relationship with Terry Linko, and what did you learn from him? Yeah, really good. You know, he's a really close friends to me. It's been many many years. Uh, I saw him in uh, Philadelphia uh, two weeks ago. He came like for a weekend. I saw him and his family. Uh, yeah, we had a great relationship. Uh, he brought me a lot because he was uh, he's a real, real champion. He is, uh, he is a person who was really, really disciplined, you know, he, in what he was doing. And uh, so uh, it was important because me, when I was uh, when I was a kid, I was uh, maybe talented, I had good capacities, but uh, that kind of discipline, you know, I didn't have. So it was good to. To have someone to look at, you know, and uh, that was the best thing that could uh, uh, I could have learned, you know, from him, the discipline side. When you t- part like play in a tournament, uh, how often a coach traveling with you, or you just uh, go by yourself? No, a few tournaments I'm on my own, and some tournaments I bring a coach. So I would say fifty-fifty, you know. What's the minimum price money to participate in a tournament for you? Maybe uh, seventy or hundred thousand. All right. What's your biggest dreams in terms of uh, squash? I think uh, biggest dream would have would be to be world champion one day and would have played the in the Olympic. I think. <laughs> World Championship is is just the same like a tournament called World Championship. So what do you feel the unique about it? The stress level, the mindset, usually the the maybe, mental part maybe, is the difficult. Uh, maybe because I, I became so close so many times, and the fact that uh, I didn't get it, you know, maybe put me a bit of bit more pressure, you know. Uh, so yeah, it's something that I have to deal with and maybe manage better in the. In the next time, you know. How do you feel this like up and down, like 2009, 2011, 2014, for you to be uh, yeah. like at the top of the ranking? What it's happens usually in because, between? Uh, not easy because you know you uh, sometimes you uh, 
you have injuries, you know, that, that people don't really know, you know, because you don't really tell people. And so you go to tournaments, you are really far from being 100%. So people, and people, you know, when you're number one or number two or number three, people always expect you to win, you know. And when whenever you lose, you know, you, they're like, oh, what happened, what happened? <laughs> but, you know, it's like, yeah. it's like, you know, you're not allowed to make mistakes or you're not allowed to be uh, 100, not be 100%. But it's the same for everybody, you know, people, uh, sometimes people don't always perform at work, you know, and uh, you're not always in the best mood, you're not always, uh, let's say you have a problem, you know, uh, uh, like uh, in your family or you have a problem with friends or you have a problem in your, outside your squash and it can affect your game too. So people, sometimes people don't understand this, you know, that you can't always be 100% uh, smiling and uh, life is uh, perfect you know so uh, so yeah sometimes I had uh, you know it was always sometimes it was good sometimes that period where I was a bit depressed and things didn't work you know even if you try to motivate keep motivate yourself and find solutions you know it doesn't work like this you know so uh, yeah you always there's always solution to problems you know but uh, you know as people tell me you know a champion uh, uh, someone who is a champion is someone who is able to come back, you know, after, you know, is not to be there, you know, once is to be able to come back, you know. How do you see the influence of having a family on your career, like more stability? Well, it's uh, the best thing that can happen to me. It's the best balance in my life, you know. So the good thing about it is, you know, when I come home, you know, I'm, I'm really happy, you know, to, to see them and uh, it's... Uh, it make me think of something else as well and not being uh, like crazy or too crazy about squash and think only about squash you know that there's something else in my life so it uh, uh, it's like a reset you know you refresh your mind with something else and then you're back focused to your tournament you know squash is the physical chess so i would like to know more details about the exercises that your coach uh, teaching you or asking you to to practice or the things that you do by yourself to you know adjust and, and reset your mind well it's just <laughs> it's just about you know uh, eating as many balls as possible the more you hit balls the more you know you have chance to eat it perfect you know so uh, then it's about you know uh, uh, at my age, you know, it's not about uh, doing too much, but about the, doing the as better quality as possible, you know. So I just try to put all my energy, you know, uh, into every shot I do, you know. You know, so when I'm on court for 40 minutes or one hour, I try not to think about something else, you know, but about, you know, the quality of my shot, the quality of my movement to get into the ball to be at the right place on the court and uh, focus, really be focused, you know, and not uh, be on court for one hour and focus on the on all these things for 30 minutes, you know. What's your favorite uh, to, uh, like tournament in the tour? I think uh, I like few. There's not really favorite, but I like few. I, I like... Um, I like the tournament in New York, Tournament of Champions. I like the tournament in El Guna, it's nice. Uh, Hong Kong is a good tournament too. Uh, we're going to have a new tournament in Dubai in May. Next year, yeah. The World Series Finals. So maybe it's going to be a good one, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I was doing uh, a, yeah. an interview with a research company yesterday to prepare for the tournament. and some stuff yeah. yeah yeah it's gonna be good i think yeah so I'm we miss you come. guys here like dubai is really a main attraction but it's so late to develop the squash and on th yeah. this level but hopefully this is this will start the momentum of, yeah, yeah well what we need anyway to is to have squash in every country you know that's the main thing we need you know so squash can be a, can be a, a good spot too so it, hopefully it's going to be a, a start of something you know I always feel like there is so much unfairness about this sport that so many people don't understand it, only the squash players. So why you feel that? Is it because it's difficult for the people to, to understand it, to see the balls? However, well, now the technology is developing and the cameras and... Yeah, now the PSA did a good job, you know, with their PSA Squash TV, uh, you know, with, they have a, 
massive crew, you know, and uh, coming to every event. And uh, they spent, uh, they invested a lot of money on this because they want squash to be on TV. So you needed this kind of tool to be like, uh, to perform well, to be able to sell to the TVs after. So that's the, that's what PSA is trying to do now, because once you have more exposure to TV, then uh, it's easier to sell the sport, you know. How do you see the experience playing in a glass court versus normal court and like with this LED lights and things? Yeah, LED is, uh, uh, is just to make the court look nice, you know, which is good, you know. Is it affecting but, you in terms of destruction? No, no, yeah. okay. no it doesn't distract you. Uh, but uh, to be fair, uh, of course, I prefer to play on the glass court because the the court rewards better the shots. So uh, I like to train on a normal court and then go to the tournament, play on the glass court because it's like a bonus for me because I, I like it, you know. If I would train on the glass court every day, you know, then I wouldn't have this kind of enjoyment, you know, when I got into a tournament. So. But why they don't build the courts as a glass courts inside, let's say, a compound or is it, it doesn't last much or it's required more maintenance? No, it's or? just because it's, uh, it more, it's more expensive, you know, it's like five times the price of a normal court. So uh, <laughs> who wants to spend this money, you know, you, you'd rather have five courts, five courts uh, in a compound than put just one glass court. The glass court is made just for the show, you know, for the tournaments and to have spectators around the court, you know. How do you describe your your feeling when you get to world number one and you have done it two to three times? Well, uh, it's it's the first time is, uh, you know, it's a lifetime achievement. I mean, you uh, work all your life to achieve one single thing and it's, uh, it's something you can be proud. So it's... It's tough to describe the feeling, you know, it's, uh, but uh, of course you're like super happy, but uh, in a way you need to, uh, you can't really think uh, or be like in the, in the moon too much because uh, we have so many tournaments back to back and if you only dream about it, then you can't play squash after. So, uh, but it's, uh, of course it's amazing feeling because it's, uh, as I say, you know, that's all you wish since you're a kid to be the best player in the world. And uh, yeah, once you have achieve it, you know, you you can s celebrate, of course, because you know that, that you did 25 years of your life or 20 years of your life, you know, not for nothing, you know, for something that you dreamed of and that, uh, that, that all the work and all the people who were behind you, supporting you, you know, that who's been working with you as well, uh, did all this effort, you know, to make this happen. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's amazing. it's amazing, you know. Yeah. How do you uh, like see the gap between the top ten players versus top fifty? Is it big gap or small gap well, or is it a mental gap? Nowadays, you know, there's uh, the gap is uh, close and close because you see uh, big upsets. Like the last few tournaments, you could see like a guy who's ranked ten in the world losing to a guy who's twenty five in the world. So the gap is really close and. Uh, as I say now, uh, people have more knowledge about the sport. They are more f uh, like aware about uh, uh, the diet side, more aware about like the uh, all the training uh, training aspect, all the, how to train properly, you know. And uh, they more like uh, they don't do copies of training. As I said, they more uh, uh, they more they, they they adapt more to themselves, you know, the training. So. Uh, you can see most of the players are really fit now and which makes the gap really close now. So it's interesting, you know, for uh, people to watch. Do you think the current PSA ranking system is fair and uh, if not, what they should change? No, the PSA ranking is uh, is all right. It's, uh, it's been many years we use the same system and I don't think we should change anything because it's it works perfectly, you know, we can't. We can't really change it, you know, because we can't play more tournaments because otherwise we would be destroyed and we travel so much already. And uh, How many tournaments you play a year? Like 12 or 13 and the ranking works as they take the best 10. So maybe if they had to change, they could change in a way that they count every tournament and divide by the number of tournaments you do, maybe. 
or uh, they just keep it the way they, they do it now you know so what else do you think the PSA should do to 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 promote the sport well uh, they have to keep going on uh, trying to sell to TVs you know their product PSA TV that's the main key you know uh, we lost uh, the campaign of you know becoming an Olympic you know Uh, which was the main thing, you know, to to be uh, more like kind upset of about, and uh, that was the key, the number one key, you know, to be able to develop the sport and get the sport more known, you know. But now, you know, we don't have it. Uh, they're going to keep focusing on trying to sell the sport to TV, you know, with their main tool, which is PSA TV. Why do you think squash is always losing to get in uh, the Olympics? I don't know if it's a money reason or if it's... Uh, I, I, I can I can't really know because, you know, they, we've done everything possible the past few years, you know, in the last few campaigns and uh, it still didn't go in. So it's all about the IOC members who decide and probably it's a money thing, you know, or... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, question about, uh, like, I want to ask you about your retirement plan. In, like, when you think you will retire five, ten years, and what's your plan after retirement? You will yeah, be a I coach stay, or you will build yeah, a club? I or wanna stay invo- I want to stay involved in squash, you know. Uh, I want to bring my knowledge maybe to players. Uh, of course, I'd like to... Uh, do some coaching, you know, it's it's, it's interesting, you know, uh, I've done all these things all my life, you know, all this work all my life, maybe to one day share, you know, what I learned, so, yeah, that would be one one of the things I would do. There were some issues happened with the referee, John uh, Marcella, so do you feel any pressure when he is the ref during some tournaments? More pressure or no? This is a question well, from no, Stephen. I don't have pressure, you know, I don't really look at who's refereeing now. Of course, I had the feeling that there was injustice, you know, in the past and uh, and maybe, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, that there was a bit of favor to a certain players, you know, and... Uh, and uh, people thought about this but uh, now you know it's not uh, it's not a problem really uh, like we we've been talking you know to each other and we've been talking with the referees and it's uh, it's getting more positive you know especially as now the PSA as as uh, lead rule, as uh, you know like kind of teacher you know or, for the referees, you know, he's doing camps for the referees, you know, he was an ex-player, you know, who knows really well the game. So to make referees to improve, you know, their level. So it's going to the, it's moving forward, you know, and not, uh, it's not really negative. So, but uh, as I say, you know, I'm just trying to focus on my game and not to stay involved, you know, with what's happening outside. So. What's your other hobbies? Yeah, well, uh, uh, Difficult to say, but because when I'm home, you know, I just want to, uh, you know, give my time to my family and uh, play with my kid. <laughs> so, <laughs> like this morning, because I'm leaving this afternoon to Qatar, and this morning I just went to the a park, you know, and play with my kid, you know, and just uh, make him happy, you know, which makes me happy. So that's all. <laughs> you have a tattoo. What's the meaning of your tattoo, and it's why you name. decided to? It's my name and it's in Arabic and uh, I like the writings and I decided to do it uh, after the World Open in Cairo in 2006. So it's uh, two friends, two Egyptian friends who, uh, who uh, did the drawing of my name and then I uh, I went to do it in France. <laughs> so just because you like the, the way we... The, the yeah, way I like the... it, yeah. Uh, it's nice. Tough question, what's the biggest failure moment in your life? Biggest failure? Yeah, do you feel that there is a specific moment that you felt the most yeah, down? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest was when uh, in 2006, the world championship in Cairo, I should have been world champion. I thought I got the match uh, stolen that day. 
what's the best advice that you have ever received? Well, uh, best advice, uh, I think, is to enjoy, just enjoy what you do, enjoy the moment. You know, you, uh, you know, there's many times, you know, you're uh, you're doing things and you don't really appreciate, you know. And uh, I think the more the more you enjoy things and the more you enjoy what you do, the more you perform in what you do. Are you a tech savvy? Do you use apps? Uh, what's are the top app, three apps on your phone, or you are well, you don't like technology? I have iPhone, but I uh, don't download apps. The only apps I have is for my kid to play games on my phone. <laughs> what are the top three people that you're inspired by? Top three people uh, on squash or outside squash? In general, in life or, or squash. Oh, I like... Uh, my first guy was uh, Michael Jordan when I was a kid, and then I like uh, as tennis player, uh, of course, like uh, Federer, you know, and uh, another person. It's tough to say the last one. I don't know yet. <laughs> Do you listen to music when you practice? No, not really. You know, I. Uh, it distract me if I uh, hear something else. <laughs> Do you follow any routine to sleep, or you're tired from training? You just well, switch before off. going to to try to fall asleep, I'm watching some series, you know, all the time, some French series, so just to uh, make me asleep. If I just uh, turn on uh, turn off the light, uh, I don't fall asleep like this. Last question: What makes you really happy? Well, uh, two things, family and uh, winning. <laughs> Thank you so much, Greg. Really appreciate this, uh, your time and the amazing questions and honesty. I'm really like, it was an amazing experience interviewing you. Pleasure, of course. I would do it anytime. <laughs> uh, I will be flying to Qatar to watch live your matches and hope to see you there. Perfect. I'll see you there, of course. See you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Be efficient and stay efficient and see you soon with another leading expert.